what is up youtubers j chen tv welcome to the channel again it has been such a long time since i posted my previous video last year thank you for all your love and all your support for the channel i've seen your likes your subscribes and your comments these are the things that keeps me moving forward in making more videos for you because i know that you are watching them in fact the previous video that i made has garnered about 10,000 views and that gives me a very good idea on what kinds of content would be of value to you so it seems that many of us are interested in looking at what are the parts that i use for my boating trip and hence I've decided to go into making a series of short clips that provide some of my experience and my opinions of the products that I've been using for my boat. So stay tuned for that and today we'll be talking about a very important piece of equipment. This is equipment that I would say is the life of your boat because it powers it up and it's none other than your battery. So let's take a look at the battery that I use. The battery is going to be one of the most essential parts of your boat. You will need your battery to power up your fish finder and more importantly to power up your trolling motor. So let's talk about some batteries, right? Uh, bear in mind I'm keeping cost as one of the priorities because I know that each of us out here watching this video, we have a set budget. If we go all out to get the best battery out there, which can cost somewhere from $500 to $1,000, then we would not have enough capital to buy the remaining equipment. We're talking about two batteries that I have used in the past. These batteries are good enough to get you out in the water this summer. If you maintain them well, you'll be able to use them for several years. Costco is the place that I go to to get these two batteries and I like it because Costco offers them cheap and offers a no for one year return warranty. Now my first battery is the Interstate 27 DC Marine slash RV battery. I was able to use it for more than 15 boat trips. It powers up the trolling motor very very well and it costs us about $88. It's one of the cheapest marine battery you're able to get uh, in this market. This is a wet battery and what that means is that you need to care for it in a very specific manner. Number one, they should not be overcharged or undercharged. If you were to overuse the battery below 50% of its capacity, the overall lifespan of the battery will be greatly reduced. Number two, this battery needs to be placed in an upright position at all times. And I got to learn this the hard way when one of my family members took my car out. My battery was sitting at the trunk. Uh, there were several hot bricks made and the battery toppled. But I was not aware of it. By the time I get to check the trunk of my car a few days later, battery acid is just all over my trunk. Lots of my fishing equipment got destroyed. The rock of my trunk is just completely destroyed. And what was worse is that when I brought the battery back to my home to service it, some of the acid got onto the wooden floor and the wooden floor has a permanent stain on it. If you're a seasoned user of the wet battery, by all means, go ahead and use it. But if you're new to marine batteries, I would strongly recommend against using a wet battery because it will save you a lot of hassle. So I got my second battery and the second battery is an AGM battery. AGM stands for Absorb Glass Matte. And to be specific, my second battery is an Interstate 24 DC AGM. Without acid in this battery, these batteries are much safer to handle. They are constructed to last long and are more tolerant to deep discharges. If your boat is in the middle of a lake, you want a battery that allows you to bring you back to the shore. And that's why you would prefer to have a battery that allows you to work them a little harder sometimes. Based on my past experience, both of these batteries are able to get you out in the water for two to three hours. But with the AGM battery, I feel safer because you know I'm not damaging the lifespan of the battery that much by going a little extra. Do you also note that the how long you can stay in the water depends on the wind condition. If you're just going against strong winds for a consecutive 30 minutes, your battery would be out of juice within 45 to an hour. The AGM battery also charges faster than a wet battery. And the nice thing about it is that it doesn't lose charge if you're not using it. A new battery is a size 24 and it's slightly smaller than the previous battery, which is at size 27. 
but I have not seen issues with a smaller size battery. On the other hand, a smaller size does give you some advantage because it is much lighter and if you're going out on a boat trip, setting up the inflatable, you, the least thing that you want to do is to be carrying lots of heavy stuff that tire you up before even fishing. And that's why I would recommend you know saving that arm strength for actually pulling up the fish later on. To give you a more concrete comparison, the 27DC wet battery by Interstate weighs about 50 pounds whereas the Interstate 24DC AGM battery is about 10 pounds lighter. However, there is a drawback of the AGM and that is the cost aspect of it. For a battery that is easier to handle, you have to pay an extra cost of $70. Uh, for me, I would say it's a cost that is well spent because you can spend less time maintaining it. So with that said, my final recommendation for you would be to get a 24DC AGM battery from Interstate. Next, I would also want to talk to you about some accessories that you would like to get with your battery. Regardless of the wet battery or the dry AGM battery, you would find these two accessories to be essential to them. You would need, first of all, a battery charger. And like I said before, marine batteries don't like it when you overcharge them. So instead of a regular charger, you want to find and get a smart charger that knows the amount that the battery is being charged. And as the battery gets charged up to the final stage, it will slow down its rate of charging so as to not overcharge the battery. I am using a Noco Genius 5M Smart Charger. You are able to switch the charging mode for the different kind of battery type. This battery charger has served me well and when the battery is almost done charging, the battery light would turn to a green light and it would just slowly turn on and off to tell me that it's maintaining the battery. This battery charger costs about $60. I'll put in the Amazon link down in the description for you. The second piece of equipment that you want to get for your battery is a battery box. To protect your investment, you want to put your battery inside a battery box. It prevents it from getting wet and it makes it easy to carry around. I have specifically chosen a battery box that have electrical outlets similar to that in the car so that I'm able to plug in my air pump. This battery box is from Main Coder and it goes for the price of $65. As you have seen in my previous video, the battery box doubles up as a platform for me. I do mount my fish finder on it and I have the wires of the fish finder taped to it. That way I have one less gear to worry about when I'm moving things around. So I hope you like this short clip to give you some information about the equipment that I'm using. In future clips, I plan to cover topics on the trolling model, the floor, many of you have been asking about that. I'll be happy to walk you through what I've done over there. Let me know in the comments below the questions or the interest that you might have so I can factor that in my next video. Until then, I'll see you back in the water.